time for another episode of everyone's favorite challenge, Sky Terran to Get Master. In the last episode, we got some awesome Viking results before. We played with mass speed banshees. Let's see what we can come up with this time. All right, first opponent of the day is going to be a Terran. Now, it's funny because uh, I expected to see Master League when we logged on today because we got enough MMR. But instead, my profile told me that I was about to get demoted to Bronze 3. So I guess uh, I am also a victim of the bug. If you guys play Ladder, especially on the NA server, I think you probably have seen it, that there's a really weird bug where it says, uh, no matter what MMR you are, you're going to get promoted to Bronze 3. And then sometimes there's silver players that say they're, they're in Master 3. So I don't know. Uh, but hopefully it doesn't bug out the promotion we can get a promotion soon i think we are actually masses mmr already at about 4.3k i believe it said uh, but we'll see now first opponent is a barco terran um i'm trying to think what the best way is to approach this one obviously i like to be very creative and try to find different ways uh to go about this i do think because i remember playing both double gas and a reaper expand i thought the reaper expand probably felt a little bit better though at the same time it is Definitely a little bit sketch to do that. I think I'm just going to go for a double gas. This is a pretty small map. It is uh, really easy to die to a cheese on this map. So uh, better be careful. Now, I actually wanted to answer a question uh, that you guys ask a lot in the comments. And this is not just a question. This is quite literally hundreds of questions that have a very similar answer. Uh, now, it is not something easy to explain, so I'll try my best. If it's a bad explanation, then my bad, but I'll try. Uh, a lot of time I get questions such as... Why don't you repair your units? That's a basic one, right? Or And actually, the questions that have the same answer are stuff like, why don't you get blue flame for your Hellions? Why don't you get this upgrade for that, etc., etc. And the question to pre or the answer to pretty much all of those questions is quite simply opportunity cost. In high level gameplay, the builds are super refined, and it just, for example, doesn't fit in a build to get a second factory to make blue flame. Because a lot of people seem to think that getting an upgrade like blue flame for your Hellions is like spending 150, 150 to get an upgrade. But in reality, you need to get a second factory, put that factory on the tech lab, and then make an uh, make the upgrade. And it doesn't necessarily cost just the resources. What it really costs is that you can't do anything else with the money. So if we try to do an efficient build, you can't possibly afford anything else while trying to get blue flame. So the only time you would get blue flame is if we're doing a very committed strategy with mass hellions. But it's the same thing with, you know, not repairing your units for a little bit, not letting your marines heal up. If you take the time to do those things, you're not going to be able to move out. If I don't repair two of my Hellions that are red HP before doing a Hellion run by, it's because if I do the Hellion run by 10 seconds later, maybe my, my Zerg opponent has both drones and links, and there's basically no purpose in still running by, right? So a lot of time when I get these questions, I, you know, it's a bit hard to answer them all because they all have the same answer, but there is a very good chance if you're wondering this, that the answer to that is just opportunity cost, which is something that uh, a lot of beginner players in particular miss. Like when I would do some coaching, what I'll see very often is that someone makes um, zealots, right? Uh, my, my coaching student would be Terran and they're playing against mass zealots. And then what happens is they make some Hellions and make another factory for blue flame. All of this stuff, it, it just doesn't fit in a, in, a, in a proper build order. Like you're not gonna be able to make enough bio units while doing this, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit of a broad answer, but that is answer to quite literally hundreds, if not thousands of questions I get uh, on the tube. So uh, there you guys go. Now I need to be careful to not make too many... Wait, where's the factory? Okay, there it is. Not to make too many marines. I was about to make six, but obviously I'm only allowed to make five marines. Probably get a bunker here. Should I actually open with a raven this time? Yeah, I might as well go for a raven. Why not? Raven is pretty good in TVT. I got my second starport here. Actually, can I wall this? I'm not sure if that's a wall for a Reaper. Uh, but maybe it is. I, I feel like a Reaper should be... Actually, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe a Reaper can jump there. Maybe it is actually walled off. Now, I know he doesn't have that many units, so... Even with good micro, he wouldn't be able to kill that much here. You could have killed one Marine if he target fire a little bit better, but that's about it. Now, he's gonna jump in my main, looks like. that. That is a really good move, by the way, getting the scouting done here. Uh, definitely a really good move. Oh, this is actually very cute as well. He's getting high ground vision with this Reaper. I have never seen anyone do this, by the way. Not even a pro. That is actually a sick move. Yo, if, if you watch this video, barcode guy, respect. That is, that is actually a nuts move. I'm not going to lie. That is crazy micro by him. Well done. He is leaving all of these on one HP, though. Oh, no. He lost the Reaper, dude. That was so close to being perfect from him. Still mad props, though. That was actually a really cool sequence there. Uh, I really think that was cool. I think it might have been a better plan for him to get scouting at some point. Because the double starpoint's right there. But obviously, he didn't know I was doing something as insane as this, right? 
So I guess I'm gonna start with getting some air control. And then I'm gonna get Cloak Banshees after. This is a build I haven't tried before. It does feel a little bit weird. Because uh, I normally the reason you get air controls for your siege tanks but here i guess i'm getting air control for my air <laughs> it, it sounds a little bit weird for sure uh but we'll see now, obviously at this point since in the last episode we landed vikings i'm gonna try it here too against the terran actually in the last episode i'm not sure if we it was like f i think we played four games in the last episode but i don't quite remember the matchups i know we did viking drops against the protons we definitely played against the zerg as well uh, don't quite remember outside of those two games, though. Actually, I don't usually forget games that fast. That's a little bit crazy. And then you guys are also surprised. Wait, you Thermal doesn't remember every game he's ever played? What's going on? He's not a robot? What is this madness? Let's drop some auto turrets here. It's also a nice move to scout. But actually, I can... Uh... No, okay. No, it's okay. Thank God I didn't go for that. That would have been a waste of turrets. So he, he sees the tech lab there. Huh. This must be a very weird thing to scout because he... I'm actually not quite sure. I should have paid a little bit more attention. I'm not quite sure if he saw the factory. Like, if the scan was here, he probably saw the double starport, but not the factory. So, he might assume that my factory is there. But why on earth would my factory be there? I, I think this must be a very, very confusing scan for him. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually has no idea what he was looking at. Uh, and yeah, I mean, understandably so, because I am playing a little bit like a psycho, of course. Oh, I can actually... Oh, nice. I didn't even need to use my Banshee to scare it away. So he's gonna... Oh, this is a very big force to be attacked with. I'm gonna get that Raven, though. There he goes. Very nice. Yeah, it's probably worth losing the Viking here. Might even... Okay. Well, this, this is gonna be a difficult hold, guys. Not gonna lie. This is gonna be a difficult hold. But it seems doable to me. Let's see. Okay. Should I go for the Disables? I probably should, yeah. And then we land the Vikings here. Get the Cloak out. And it looks like we are going to hold relatively nicely. But we are going to lose all of those freaking SUVs. Let me just make sure I get the freaking Raven. And this Cyclone. That auto turret did a mad amount of damage, by the way. And yeah, I'm not going to lie, guys. We are definitely going to be behind here. I took so much damage from that. That I actually uh, have to look for a lot of counter damage. If I don't find it, we are definitely going to be in trouble. Though my, my air army does look pretty huge. He's most likely not going to make another Cyclone. Uh, which means that my air army is going to be pretty safe. There we go. He does have a lot of stuff, by the way, I have to say. His uh, macro is kind of off the charts here. Oh, that's... Why does there turret there? Oh, my God. Now nah, these bench is just going to go ham. He's not going to have enough air to contest this. And this is where the air control is fragging, guys. I have too many Vikings. I don't think he can actually catch up. Make sure to kill this SUV there. There we go. Wow, okay. I mean, this is going to do an insane amount of damage. I can actually... Let's see what he has. He doesn't have Vikings here. Can I just kill everything with these Banshees? That sounds a little bit ridiculous, but I might be able to. I'm not sure what he has, like, uh, Marine-wise. That looked like he had, like, five Marine. No, ten Marines, sorry. Uh, I have five Banshees, but he looked like he had a little bit more. Loses the CC. Okay, wait. Where's the third? Oh, the third is there. Oh, guys, I have Banshee speed as well now. That's fantastic. That's going to be really hard for him to micro against. And now my Vikings can get into the mix as well. There we go. Actually, I actually have enough SCVs to saturate this base, uh, surprisingly. Okay, he's going for it. Auto turret is going to be uh, massive here, by the way. The auto turret tanked a lot of shots. And then I need to make sure to just kite with these Banshees. It's actually, I'm not kidding, it might be harder to kite if they have speed. I know that sounds really stupid, but every time I kite, my, my benches just go back in like that because they have speed. But uh, yeah, luckily it seemed like we hit just in time. And we actually hit a perfect uh, timing here. Because if we didn't hit this, you saw his third wave was right there, guys. He was already saturated. And now we're obviously going to be ahead. But for a second, that looked like it was going to be very, very scary. I should probably be making some more starports here. Oh, but it's actually Comet Shield that's going to go down here as well. That's fantastic. I think maybe... I'm not sure if I should land these or what I should do with them. Because killing the Vikings would obviously be massive. But let's get these as well. Might he, yeah, he's probably pulling the SCVs, I was going to say. He actually doesn't have a, a Raven, by the way. So there's actually no scan. Now, these Banshees are doing a surprising amount of damage, by the way. I really thought Marines at some point would, like, make me have to uh, go away. But these branches actually just straight up destroyed all of the Marines. I do think it's funny he made a siege tank. I know it's probably just like automatic macro, but uh, the last thing he wanted there was a siege tank. Also, is that is that his fourth base? Did he have four bases against my freaking two? 
Was he really that far ahead? Holy crap. Let me just make sure he's not actually hiding a base or anything. Because he is making a lot of units off of one base, I have to say. I mean, at this point, his barracks are dead. I, th I think the last thing I have to check for uh, is a hidden base. And at the same time, I'm going to make enough Banshees that I can just one-shot the turrets. And that's how I'm going to finish the game. Because uh, Banshees against turrets are pretty awful, honestly. But if you have enough to one-shot, then, you know, different story. I do love seeing them that fast, by the way. Don't, don't you guys feel like a Banshee is like... It's a unit you wouldn't expect to be fast. So when you see it zooming like this, it actually feels a little bit weird. I think I have enough Banshees for the one-shot. Let's see. We want to keep them clumped up. There you go. Oh, didn't actually get that. And this one? Barely not enough. Oh, I didn't kill the turret. Wait, that was actually something I just learned right there. I didn't actually know that. Is that I A moved the Banshees, but it targeted the Marines over the turret. I actually didn't know that was a thing. Did you guys see that? Like, I, I tapped the turret once. Check this out. I tapped the turret once, and then after tapping it, I just A moved. And none of them shot the turret, not even the ones that were closer. Okay. I'm not sure if this was just a sick coincidence that none of my, I think it was eight benches I had left, targeted the turret. Or that it always works like that. That could have been something new we just learned, guys. Anyway, 56 workers killed this game. Units loss is about double. Now, let's quickly check what he actually had. Because it, it really seemed like I was just like massively behind after this. Supply is the same. Uh, 18 SEVs behind, holy crap. He has three barracks producing double eBay. I really think if he got these turrets up, he would have been super far ahead and that would have been our hardest game yet. Um, I think our, our biggest chance was that he actually did not really make turrets in the mineral lines. Like this main base would have been absolutely ravaged. So I feel like I could have made something happen, but this could have been a scary game. I feel like this guy played very well, by the way. I think that's the strongest opponent we played so far. The early game trick with the Reaper and Helium was super cool. His macro for the first push was awesome. But anyway, we got the dub. Let's move on to game number two. All right, game number two. Oh, that's our highest LMR opponent yet, guys. A 4-6, almost 4-6 Protoss player. Now, this is going to be perhaps the perfect test to see if we can actually survive, you know, master level attacks with Sky Terran. Now, just uh, for some fun info, guys, I actually checked the last guy's profile because I felt like he was playing very well. And it seems like he was an ex-high level player. I checked his profile. He was about rank 75 GM four years ago. And the account was actually not used since then. Uh, so it seems like we played a, a very talented player that hadn't played in a while. Or maybe he just hadn't played on his barcode account in a while and had to level it back up. So that was actually a, a very interesting, interesting match and potentially a good foresight as well. Um, but I do think it's possible if he was a high level player leveling up his account again that he didn't expect us to also be good. So maybe he was playing like extra reckless, for example. So I'm not quite sure yet, but I would love to actually find out the story. Is he like a, a returning ex-pro? Is he something, someone who just, you know, hasn't, uh, hasn't practiced for a while for whatever reason? I'm really, I'm really interested in that. Uh, but anyway, that was, that was fun to see. I wonder if you guys noticed as well during the game that he was actually playing uh, a little bit better or maybe like a lot better than, than expected because I do feel like his moves were very clean. Um, the thing that made me doubt a little bit, actually, because the Reaper Heli move was super cool, right? But then he did leave all of my Marines on 1 HP without killing any and lost the Reaper. So I thought that maybe he was just having like a flash of brilliance, but then he went back down. Uh, but yeah, instead he just ended up being actually a very good player. Now we're playing against Dugo, a Masters Protoss. Uh, and I, I do think... This is the case for a lot of the challenges, uh, as you guys know. But I do think Protoss might be the hardest. Um, and it's just... Wait, did that... It looked like he was going to build a pylon there for a cannon rush for a second. That would have been a little bit scary. Um, but yeah, I do think Protoss might be the scariest. Especially if they go for Blink Stalker stuff. Ah, so we're actually getting like... I wouldn't call it cheese. I guess we're getting like semi-cheese. That's, uh, that's, I literally made that up just now, by the way. But um, he does not have an... Uh, this could actually be a proxy guy. I need to be very careful here, guys. These kind of builds you can lose to very easily. Um... So I need to be very careful. This does look like there's a proxy gate on the map. So I'm not being the smartest here by trying to defend the low ground. But I've uh, committed to it. And it's not really good to change your mind in the middle of the game. So that's what I'm going to go for. He does only have one gas. So it seems like it's just a proxy gate pretty much. Now we're just going to micro like crazy. Oh, he's going to go for that one. That is actually totally fine for me. Do have to micro this. Actually, I have another one here. Forgot about that one for a second. And this Zealot is going to die pretty fast. There we go. I'll probably get my second gas. Like, I mean, I do have to make Sky Terran at some point. So, it seems logical enough. Um, 
If this is not a proxy gate, I'm very surprised because... Oh wait, maybe I can block it in a little bit? I mean, that, that stalker is gonna die for sure. The question is, is it gonna die efficiently enough? Okay. Oh, my Reaper actually dodged that shot, by the way. That's pretty crazy. See? Oh, he got the Reaper. That's great micro from him. Unfortunately for us. Can we kill that Stalker? Ooh, this is not looking fantastic, guys. Uh, keep in mind, I am approaching my limit of Marines, so... I mean, actually, I can fly away this, uh, fly away this base, I suppose, but still. Not super happy with how this is going so far. And apparently it's not a proxy yet, because that really didn't feel like that many units coming into my natural. I just wonder what he was doing. Wait, did he maybe block his own Nexus? No way, right? A Nexus... Guys... Uh... I mean, potentially that is what happened. Uh, I'm not quite sure. It is actually pretty hard to tell. Like, it looks like a Nexus should fit, but maybe it barely doesn't. Uh, and that's why there was no Nexus there. I mean, it's possible. I, I would imagine that uh, a player this level doesn't make these mistakes very frequently, so it's unlikely. But it does kind of look like he might have blocked it. If he didn't block it, the main reason why I'm doubting... If he didn't block it, I have no idea why the Nexus wasn't there. Because it, it should have been. Now, because he's catching this SCV, I'll send out another one on the other side because I uh, do really want to get some scouting down. If he had a second gas, by the way, then I would definitely suspect other stuff. Oh, no, I misclicked this SCV. That is very annoying, actually. Very, very annoying. It was supposed to take the other path. It's actually one of my weaknesses. One of my friends told me a while ago. So it was a proxy gate, but he made one unit from it? Or, like, maybe the Zealot and the Stalker, I suppose? But nothing else? Huh. Okay. I mean, I'm a little bit puzzled, but I guess we'll find out what the uh, intention is after this. Let's just find out if we block this Nexus. Uh, you know, that could be the highlight so far. It doesn't look like he did. No, he didn't. Okay, good for him. That would have that would have been devastating, to be honest. I, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people watching have done that before on accident, and it is probably pretty devastating. Uh, guys, I do not see a robo here. Just saying. I There's no robo here, guys, and I have cloak. Uh, this could be... A very quick win for us, unless there's a robo hidden somewhere. Um, he could also he could he could he can attack us with a really strong force, but if there's no robo, he's just gonna lose a million pros to one banshee. Okay, yeah, there was no robo. All right, fantastic game. Uh, you know, this is just a typical just greedy protoss player. Oh, he actually walled in his sentry tool on accident. I don't think it fits there. Um, so let's see what he did. He made a proxy gate. And he just decided to not make that many units from it. I guess he gave up on the attack. Uh, realistically here, if he made more units, it would have been... Oh, he actually chronoed without building a unit. Was that an accident? That is a full chrono wasted. That was like one second on Stalker. That's a big mistake. Um, I can understand if he decided to not make another unit if it wasn't a mistake. Because he was expecting us to have a Cyclone or Tank, right? Uh, just to explain the thought process here. But... Because I'm not allowed to make one, if he did commit to the attack, it would have been really bad for us. Uh, but I guess he made the logically right move. Though judging by that chrono boost, it could have been a mistake. And that could have been a mistake that actually costed him this game. Because keep in mind, you know, even though it wasn't the cleanest hold ever, you know... Let's, let's be honest, it wasn't the cleanest hold ever. I lost a few SUVs. I lost my Reaper in particular, which is bad. I'm still expanding before him. Uh, and just so you guys know, Protoss is typically supposed to be about 7 workers ahead. So 23 against 23, obviously fantastic for us. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of a lucky game. I'll take it though, and let's keep it going. And there we go. We're actually not bugged. We are officially Bronze 3. Nah, just kidding. We are actually Masters 3, and that means our road to gem is now fully open. Let's do it. La Lechuga, okay, a 4A Terran player. All right, that's gonna be... Uh, you know, I feel like we're getting players above our MMR consistently this episode, which is a very fun challenge. I uh, definitely enjoy it. Now, after that first game against the Terran was a bit close, this is gonna be a bit scary. It's also a small map. Um, and on this map... So you have a back base here. And this back base, it's fantastic. But I think it's mostly useful against like Zerg, for example. Because Zerg are not likely to attack you with drops or air units. But against Terran, they can very often just siege a tank here. And it can already hit your base. So definitely a scary map to play on. Uh, but we'll see. Our opponent's also going to be our highest opponent yet. Which is, you know, that's fun. Uh, a lot of time we kind of switch back and forth. But I guess an episode where everyone is just very high in MMR is, uh, is pretty sick. I think I'm going to follow the same build, because the build actually did feel pretty good. Um, and I feel like I mentioned it about twice before. It is just a nice mind game. 
uh, to start with a double gas because it scares opponents they don't quite know what you're doing obviously from a double gas on one base you could easily all in you could play a macro game and it just makes the, the guessing game a little bit harder now if you guys are enjoying this episode and you like challenges like this and other kind of challenges make sure to subscribe uh, a lot of these days I'm actually doing two videos a day so make sure to not miss out on any of it and if you can reach even further sub goals that would be awesome uh, my stream and my comments were hyping me up to try for 100k subs by the end of the year that would be absolutely incredible what if you could get something like 75k that would already be way beyond expectations so if you're not subbed yet but you're enjoying the content make sure to press the button and uh, help both of us out now use SCV scouting that's already a pretty safe sign that means it's not like a proxy at least unless it's a I mean, I guess it's possible. That would be the world's weirdest proxy, though. Uh, to proxy with an SCV scout, then you truly have no money whatsoever. So our opponent is playing... Yeah, most likely a double gas as well. I'm trying to get as much scouting. <laughs> it was a little bit greedy by me to actually go over the depot. He could have locked me in. I don't want to lose an SCV. But uh, yeah, in, in TVT, this is actually the most scary part. And this is also why doing builds like Reaper Expand is very complicated. Because right now... In TVT, that can mean everything. He could be Reaper expanding with a fast wall. He could be making two racks Reaper behind the wall. Uh, he could be taking the back base even more on this map. He could be playing double gas, one base all in. You just don't really know. Okay, this Reaper I need to catch. I think I actually have a good shot here. He might go up the ramp. I need to be careful for that. Oh, he didn't see me. Ooh. You better run, buddy. I think he's going to escape. Good grenade by him. Well done. Oh, my CC is definitely very late. That's a... Uh, not a very pretty mistake there. That's going to be about 150 minerals too late. That's unfortunate. And now I do need to get a bunker up because I'm not allowed to make any other units in these early game, uh, you know, scramble, scrapyard of units, I guess, one Reaper and five Marines. Actually, I didn't really think about it before, but the typical two Reaper, one Heli in aggression is actually going to be really difficult to deal with if I make one Reaper into two Marines. Oh, now he grenaded his own Reaper. Okay. I got my own Reaper here, though. Or my second Reaper. Do a little bit of micro. I'm actually gonna YOLO. He's not paying attention. No way. I knew he wouldn't expect that. There we go. Okay, beautiful. That was a very risky maneuver, by the way. That actually could have cost me the game there. But instead, it's gonna save me the game. So that is fantastic. Let me just put this Marine a bit further back. Because I saw a Hellion approaching with the Watchtower. And I'm gonna try something sneaky. I could try... Oh. Oh, it's actually... Okay, are you... that is not a great idea by him to go in there. Yeah, that's gonna lose him that. And I actually saw his follow-up Reaper too. So now I'm gonna be able to catch that as well. There we go. Okay, well, this could not have been a better start. And we find this expansion. Wow, this is actually incredible. Uh, my, I didn't have the right unit set for a proper early game TVT. But yeah, the, I don't think I've ever had a good early game like this at TVT. That's insane. What did I lose? I feel like I lost... I lost a Reaper for like three Reapers and two Hellions or something like that, right? Or maybe one Hellion? It was something absolutely absurd anyway. So this is, yeah, could not have been any better. Now, last TVT I opened up with a Raven. Now I'm actually going to go for the Banshee. Just getting some variety. Uh, like I always say, early on in these challenges, it's very important that we find the right builds to just combat the higher level players. I'm actually surprised this SCV is still alive, by the way. Normally, you don't really have units on the map because they just die in TVT. Because there's always something roaming. But this Watchtower here was actually able to see everything, which is sick. This is also, like, the strongest feature of this map, by the way. If you play a map where the Watchtower is this OP, you should always try and get it with anything. Uh, it's probably even worth it to make, like, an extra Hellion to try and grab it. Because here, you see this Watchtower? I saw every single of his units pass by. And if he does like any drop, any air harass, I will see it instantly. Oh, now this actually, this is actually good for us. Uh, because I have the double starport and I have the Vikings as well. This is, when I, what is the, oh, it's Mass Marine, right? Yeah, if I play Mass Marine, this is basically an Im impossible build to play against. But now it's actually just perfect for us. Because we have the Vikings and the Banshee with this build, which is very unusual. But we're pretty much going to clear it all up for free. Yeah, this could not have been any better. He even brought two SCVs. Guys, this might actually be the perfect game. I'm not sure if I've ever played a game that is just this perfect. He even waste a scan. Oh my goodness. That is that is 200 minerals down the drain, by the way. I think a mule mine's about 180 or so. Wow, this is insane. I actually... I'm kind of shocked. This is our highest opponent yet. And this is by far the best game yet. And I'm not even really doing much myself. I'm just kind of winning with my build. I'm actually going to go for this tank here. I'll kill the Marines later. Actually, it's two siege tanks. He rallied another one across. That's also going to die. <laughs> this, one, this batch has 11 kills. And there's only two SCVs, I believe. The rest is Marines and stuff. 
So there's a Banshee in my main. Wait, that is actually a very interesting follow-up. I've never done that myself. Ah, so it's two Banshees. Or, uh, yeah, probably two Banshees because he has Cloak. So he went Tank Drop into Banshee. Okay, now I'm interested because I have never seen that. And if there's something I really love in StarCraft more than anything else, is when people do a new build that gives me ideas. Like, it's just... I don't know if you guys are the same, but it just feels really good to be like... Because in, in StarCraft, it's very normal to get stuck into patterns. That's also what I really love about be doing these shows in general, that I get to play with different unit comps. But you're stuck in patterns so often that when you find a new build, it's just, you know, it's, it's really exciting to try it out, get on the ladder, play some custom games, just really give it a shot. Now, these Banshees are not going to die unless he has Vikings. Doesn't even look like he has a scan here. I can actually just kill this turret, by the way, I think, before it lands. Before it finishes, rather. Three Banshee DPS is pretty crazy. Okay, so his Banshee is there. I was looking for that. Dude, this Banshee is actually just killing everything. How many... Oh my... They have 33 kills! And he loses his Banshee before cloaking. This might be the, the roughest game ever for anyone. I, I, I legit think this might be the roughest game in history for a, a, a ladder player, you know? Like, holy crap. <laughs> I feel like I should feel bad for this. Oh my god. I can't wait to see the units lost in this one. Get ready for this one, guys. <laughs> 400 against 4,231. Guys, I know a perfect game... Actually, if you guys didn't notice, a perfect game usually means that you didn't lose a single resource. A single unit, rather. But I think this was really the perfect game. I, I, I could say, I think it's possible I might never play a game this perfect again. Where, I, I don't want to credit myself too much for this. Obviously, I played well, but I'm not meaning to credit myself for this. But everything just worked out perfectly. The build order, you know, the micro against the Reaper when I YOLO'd, when I attacked him. My build against the Banshees, everything. This was actu actually just filthy. This was disgusting. Uh, the game was relatively short, so we're going to play another one. But holy crap, I'm not sure if we're going to anything anything better than this but let's go all right final day or game of the day is going to be against captain club another terran player on another map now is there anything cheesy i can do is what i'm wondering about you know i've been coaching a student who plays in about this mmr range i think a little bit lower maybe about 4.1 or so and he said he had a build where he just goes for proxy cloaked banshees which for me as a, an ex-pro who plays on the top of a GM, it doesn't make a lot of sense because the way you play a TVT is usually you always get a Cyclone and a Raven because it just shuts everything down in the early game. But apparently in like Masters Diamond, people just hate, ra hate making Ravens and Cyclones. So if you make a Banshee, they're gonna have to waste scans, which is just very inefficient. So maybe a proxy Starport is actually just nuts. Uh, and I would like to try it. My last opponent did make a Raven though, but he only made a Raven after making one medevac and two banshees, I believe, which is not quite the same as getting your, your raven up nice and fast. But maybe that's actually a very fun build to try. Maybe I'll just go for a cloak banshee this game, try to make vikings at home. You know, I'm not sure if I've ever um, told you guys about my encounter with Alpha Star. Um, I actually had a few encounters with Alpha Star, but one of them... It did a, a build so weird, I, I did still win. It did a build so weird that I copied it and I refined it a little bit, like the idea. And I actually ended up beating Innovation with it on the Korean ladder, who was the best Terran in the world at the time. And basically what it did was it was... Actually, it was pretty much a Sky Terran build. What it did was it would go for Cloaked Banshees. Uh, and the weakness of Cloaked Banshees is just that you don't have Raven, so your anti air sucks, right? But it would make Cloaked Banshees and an extra Starport, so I would... Take damage from the Cloak Banshees. Because I, I I was kind of like, you know what? Frick it, this guy made Banshees. I'm just going to go ahead and kill him. Because he can't have enough at home playing Banshees. But then he played double Starport with an eBay. So when I arrived, he had a turret Viking defense. And he had Banshees in both my bases. Now, Alpha Star played a little bit awkward. So I was still able to, uh, to win the game. Even though I was behind. But... It was definitely a pretty good idea. So for a while, I was playing triple starport because I wanted to take it to the next level, get even more air. And it actually worked out decently. Now in this case, uh, just to not confuse you guys, I didn't play full on Sky Terran. I would play three starports and then switch into a more regular mech with, you know, Siege Tanks and Thors and stuff. Uh, but that definitely, you know, helped me get some wins for a while. And it was, it was really fun to try at least. So we're playing as the Reaper Expand here. Now, since we are in Master League, that does mean I have uh, full freedom with the Reaper. I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, try to do some damage if I can. Probably just jump into the natural. Sometimes Reaper Expanders, they play Reaper Reactor. And if you kill their one Reaper, you can just destroy their entire career with, you know, just your one Reaper and nothing else. So, that'd be nice. No, actually, wait, I need to keep this for the proxy. 
Because I do want to proxy a starport. It's, I'm actually going to be a little bit late. Maybe I'll build it very close. I want to build it a little bit far away to be safe, but... Uh, actually, I, I should make the CC first. There we go. Okay, there we go. Good micro by him. He, he was actually very close to uh, losing that battle. Didn't dodge that grenade by a big margin. Actually, I'll build it here. Oh, so he went Reaper Marine. Okay, right. Very safely played. Actually, uh, I'm not sure if you guys knew. Actually, I might have talked about it in a video. I feel like I gave so many random tips before that you've probably heard this one before. But um, if you jump up a cliff against a Marine with a Reaper, you always win. Even if it's a double cliff, the Reaper still wins. So technically, that one Reaper doesn't defend it. Uh, so what he was trying to do was basically move his Reaper back and forth if he needed it there, right? But uh, there, it, it is always a little bit risky because I could have jumped up and, uh, yeah, basically just destroyed his Marine for free. Now, can I afford it? I think I can afford a second starport. I'm just going to pop it down already. There we go. My opponent is playing very safe because he played Reaper Expand. So, yeah, I don't think we really have to worry about anything, especially because it wasn't a gas first. If it's a gas first Reaper Expand, by the way, it's very uh, probable that they're going to play Hellions, in which case you have to be scared. But you can't really do that after playing uh, barracks first reaper marine doesn't quite work out like it's a i'm gonna i'm getting the banshee even before the orbital by the way because it just oh I actually made one re marine too many that's unfortunate here we go one starboard i hope he's not making a cyclone from that of course now let's get the orbital out here uh and i i got a decent scout off he seems to be playing very standard which i did expect now i just hope that he's gonna follow my theory and not go for cyclone raven because if it is cyclone raven my benches are going to be very sad. That's all I can say. They're going to be very, very sad. Though there is actually, even in that case, there's a little bit of opportunity, by the way. Cyclones? Wait, what is this? You just right like the he freaking Hellion in my base. Talk about some advanced scouting techniques. Holy. That is actually... I'm not sure if he's going to read this. Because it looked... It looked very suspicious what I did. Because I didn't even have add-ons on these, right? I feel like he probably doesn't read this because it just looks so weird, but there's a good chance he's reading that I that something is going on, at least, you know? But the thing is, if there's a reactor and a starport very fast, the most logical thing would be that it's a, a tank push, right? With two starports, or just with one starport making Vikings very fast. But there was no add-on on the, on, the, on the factory. But he might actually have believed me when I made a fake tech lab. This tech lab is obviously just fake. But maybe he bought into it. At least that's what I hope. I'm gonna send one of Marine out on the map to make sure I actually see it coming if I get attacked. And now I have two Banshee. I do have to say, guys, I'm not feeling 100% secure because I did put, like, pretty much all of my eggs in one basket here. If this doesn't work out, we're actually gonna be in a bit of... Tr what is this depot placement? Oh, watch. Oh, this is, this is perfect. Yep. There we go. That's exactly what we needed. That's what I was going to talk about. There's actually opportunity. Uh, against one Cyclone, you can actually kill it with the Banshee. And that's what happens. Now, he's probably not going to have Ravens yet. Let's see. Oh, I mean, I'm in the Viking. Sorry. But he did actually have one. Uh, but I'm still going to get out. So it's all good. We did a good amount of damage. Going to be pretty happy with this one. Now, I'm actually... I think I should probably be moving across here, to be fair. I know it looks really weird to be moving across with freaking six Vikings and... You know, four marines, whatever this scramble of army is. But it does make sense. Because with these vikings, I could actually target down his raven and his viking. Now, it was weird to me that he had one viking. Instead of, like, multiple. He was making a lot of barracks. Which means that we have to be uh, in a little bit of a hurry. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna one-tap this. All those vikings are gonna get one shot. There we go. Let me get the raven. He threw down both auto turrets. Which is totally fine. Oh, but th this move is actually sick, though. He's scanning my base. He's like, what the hell are you doing? I want to steal this build. And now a tank is going to die as well. Yeah, we're doing so much damage here right now. With the most random-ass build ever, to be honest. Oh, he has Stim already. Oh, that is unusual. There we go. Wait, am I not going to lose a Banshee? Holy. Oh, we did... Oh, there was a freaking Viking there. I didn't even see... I was like, wait, what killed my thing just now? There was a freaking Viking there, guys. Can you believe it? That's a scam. I don't think I have... Uh, what's it called? Uh, I actually... Oh, Banshee Speed on the way is what I wanted to say. Let's see. Oh, let me just one-tap that Viking. There we go. I mean, if he, if he stims more, that's just good for us. Uh, it's not really gonna... I'm actually gonna get a 4CC. I think I need to bunker up a little bit faster. Because if he attacks me with Marines, then... You know, I'm not gonna have the best defense against it. He's setting up with turrets. It seems like our opportunity to do damage has passed. 
But that is totally fine. Let's just see what we can do. Maybe I can bait. Actually, I can just kill some marines for free with this with the cloak. There you go. Baiting another stim. That's my favorite thing to do. They're always like, haha, you messed it up. Actually, I'm gonna make a few liberators. That seems like a good choice here. Let's see. Sometimes I forget that I'm allowed to make other units than I already have. Okay, these banshees did take a little bit too much damage. That is not well done by me. That's supposed to be an orbital. And now... Okay, so he scans my fourth base, thinking it's my third. Which is very good for us, because he might now be more tempted to just sit back, knowing that my eco sucks. But in reality, I have a, you know, pretty much fully saturated third base already here. Uh, let me just repair all of these thingies. And then... I do need a sensor tower, actually, else I'm... I might just be late. I mean, these bases are very safe. Um, since he doesn't have an air army, he can't really kill my banshees with anything else than marines, right? I mean, oh, he is actually here. Ooh, okay. Well, actually, I have the, the the liberators here are massive, actually. Oh, no. He sees... He was really YOLO there, uh, which is pretty good by him. I still think I have more than enough units here, though. The scan is definitely hurting. There we go. Sucks that uh, he YOLO'd in harder than I expected, because I lost my liberator very fast. I mean, keep in mind I'm on four bases here. This is definitely a big setback, though. Like, it was a very good move for him to actually go in there. Uh, I didn't expect it, and that's my bad. And I think at this point, I probably... Yeah, I only have three Banshees now. Oh, that is pretty rough. Hmm. I think I'll just add some more Starports now. And then... Yeah, I just I need a little bit more firepower. Like, Vikings are great. They're not quite firepower. I'm gonna get an armory just so I can get the uh, servos upgrade so my Vikings can land faster. That seems pretty smart. And I'm really good that I scanned there, by the way. If I didn't scan that, that he was gonna attack me, we would have been probably just absolutely screwed, so... Really happy with that one. Now, at this point, he does have his third base saturated. I, I can just imagine. Let's see. Even as turrets? Okay. I might have to go into battle cruisers for this one. Or maybe I should go for liberators first. Those liberators would have just held that base for me, by the way, if I didn't uh, siege them too late. So he's just putting down the static defense everywhere. Which you could say is the right move, but I'm actually not 100% sure. Like, ideally, he just makes an army that can actually deal with my stuff as well, right? I have a lot of Vikings. These Vikings, actually, I could land these Vikings into the main as well. I just don't have servos yet. That's why it's super risky. Let's see. Okay. What is he going to do? I saw his Marines. He didn't actually move them. So that is a little bit annoying. I would like to know what he's actually up to. Let's get a second armory as well. He doesn't have the Watchtower, which is nice. And I think with this one, I should be able to kill a few gases or something. With this little Banshee squad on the top over here. Let's see. I can just kill this turret, actually. It's going to die fast enough then. Now we can start. Dude, he has so many freaking uh, missile turrets, actually. It's kind of insane. He's not repairing this. Oh, I think he's... Oh, he is coming back. Okay, I thought he was uh, staying there for a second. I think I have to add some liberators. I don't think my army has enough power. Those banshees did survive, so I'm not sure how, but they did survive. It's just sick. Uh, oh. He's making turrets, but those are just going to get one shot. And here's the banshees are going to be... If he doesn't make vikings, this is what banshees can just do, by the way. Like, he, he can't actually catch these, so... He's just gonna keep losing units for free. If he stims, I can just fly away. Or if he scans, rather. You see? <laughs> it's really hard to catch these. It's just like against Protoss. Now, let's see. Which is the most healthy one? That one? I'll just go for the turret. And I'll put the healthy one first. It's probably the best way to do it. And I did deny one of his upgrades. I'm not sure which one. But every time he stims, it actually... I, I feel like I'm gonna lose one Banshee. Uh, but it doesn't even hit anything, really, somehow. Let's see? Okay. Guess we'll just cancel these. Oh no, I accidentally... Wait, can I save these? No, looks really rough here. Ooh, that is, sucks for us, guys. We're actually, well, I don't think I have servos yet, so this is going to be rough. Still have enough to win the fight, of course, but... Yeah, not the cleanest stuff ever by me. Oh, he's not targeting the Vikings. Oh, that is really nice. Actually, we didn't even lose that much. I have 150 supply here. But yeah, uh, not the best control of my benches on the other side. I kind of panic f 2 a little bit. And yes, guys, I, I do that too. Don't worry about it. You're, you guys are not the only one. I also hit my, my panic F2s when I, uh, you know, see need for it. Now, I feel like I should be ahead in supply. He only has Marines. He does have really good upgrades, by the way, 2-1. I have plus one air attack, and that's all I have. Now, what sucks about this map is that I feel really safe having my PFs in these chokes. But what happens realistically is that they just keep right-clicking past my PFs. 
So I really do need another PF. Else I can't really cover all my bases, but... Yeah, that's obviously a little bit expensive to get all those PFs up super fast. Okay, so he's moving out. I have a lot of liberators here. And then I can just... Okay. Wait, there's no way... He, he, he's, he wants to fight this? That is insane! Oh my god, he's actually winning too? Holy crap! Okay, Sky Terran sucks! <laughs> <laughs> the more you know, guys, that was five liberator seeds, by the way. Unless I, I, I misclicked, that actually was five liberator seeds. Holy crap. And these liberators are just not doing anything against these marines. Okay. Oof, I guess the answer is that we just have to make battle cruisers. I mean, the faster we know, the better. But uh, yeah, that was actually, that looked like a fight he could never take. That was my entire air army siege. The Vikings landed. Uh, and it was still not really enough to do anything. So I guess we just have to play battle cruisers, maybe. Did I have my range for that? I mean, it doesn't really matter. I don't think he has siege far enough out of range anyway. But that, that was actually a little bit of a shocking fight. I know he has fantastic upgrades. But that was uh, that was a little bit rough. Not gonna lie. But maybe I can... Oh, let's seize these liberators here. I have another one. He, he actually doesn't care about these libs at all. It's actually insane. Okay, now th that shouldn't be that great, right? That's like 10 marines. Come on. No freaking way that that works out. Okay, there we go. It did require a little bit of micro, but... Finally, we actually uh, got a trade that went as I expected. Or hoped, I should say. Let's get this baby seized over here. And he scanned this base earlier, but he scanned it uh, before I took it. So he might actually not expect it to be there, which is probably going to play in our favor. Let's get some turrets around. The watchtower seized that base, by the way. So if he does have the watchtower, that is uh, a little bit problematic. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty much just only making marines, which makes complete sense, of course, considering my strategy. But I feel like at this point, when I'm stabilized, I really, you know, <laughs> I feel like at some point I should be able to take a good fight, right? I can't imagine that it's always going to be uh, losing against marines here. Let's see what he has. I'm just going to kill this turret over here. It's going to give me access to the base. And then I do need to pay very close attention to... Oh, okay, well, thank goodness this planetary is actually alive. Oh, he's gonna go for it, okay. Yeah, no, like, Marines really suck against planetaries, guys, so that is probably not gonna happen. Oh, no, he made a Viking! Guys, my biggest nightmare is reality. It's a freaking Viking. Oh, I wish that was a freaking planetary. Yeah. Yeah, the exact same thing just keeps happening. These units just don't compete with Marines. Like, I need to be perfectly in position or I just can't. Okay. No, this looks like it should be a decent fight here, though. All these units are low. My Banshees are going to kill them pretty fast. I mean, he can kill my Starpers, but I have enough Starpers, really. I uh, just need to seize a little bit further. He does keep stimming. Okay, he's going to go for the Lib. Now, this, that's going to be good enough for me. Even if he kills the Liberator... Oh, he doesn't actually... Oh, he does kill it. Okay. It looks like he wasn't going to. Well, oh, my God. These are like... I'm actually blown. My mind is blown, guys. I couldn't... I really didn't think it was going to be this difficult to just beat a simple ball of marines. But uh, apparently it really is. Now, I got my first battlecruiser up and running now. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I guess my mistakes are pretty simple here, which is nice. Like, they're going to be relatively easy to fix. Uh, I, well, first of all, I was, just, I was just really overconfident. Like, I really didn't think it was going to be this hard. Uh, but realistically, I should just, yeah, always be in position. Now, this, this stim is... Really insane. Uh, I mean, there's a planetary fortress right there, which is gonna do them. That planetary fortress is killing everything right now, by the way. That planetary is 11 kills. Like, it, it literally was just born, and it has 11 kills. Okay, I think finally he went a little bit too psycho. Um, I, you know, I could have called his move psycho earlier, but they were working out so well. And if they work out that well, I feel like you can't really call them psycho anymore, you know? Then it's just like, okay, he made the right move, and that's it. Uh, but finally there, he went a little bit too psycho. I think he lost like 40 supply there or something. Uh, let me get my plus 3 upgrades, though. See, if I had... I, I wish I had some more libs here. He, he always he's, he also just stims before he's even close to the fight. Like, he really wants to brawl with me, you know? It's not even a thought. Like, he's, okay, he's there. I'm gonna mess him up. Like, he doesn't even think about it. He sees a unit of mine. He's like, okay, stim. Let's go. Um, I don't think he has that many bases, actually, though. So, that's gonna be pretty good. Um, uh, this is gonna be painful, but I'm just gonna do it. I wanna create a little bit of chaos anyway. Anything I can do is gonna be all right, I think. Oh, need to be careful with those. Did I, I didn't get my servos yet, I think. No, I didn't. Here we go. I'm actually gonna fly these away. I'll just use these BCs to do damage here. If he wants to repair the turret, it's fine with me. Like, I'll just kill all of the SCVs. 
turrets are, they do do a lot of damage, so I'm gonna have to teleport out at some point. There we go. And that moment is... Oh, that actually died. Okay. Well done. Um, now, what do I make? He's, he's start, did he make Vikings or is it just the, the same one Viking that he's had all this time? That's what I'm not 100% sure about. Let's get this base as well. I mean, if he's gonna let me get all these bases, then I'm just gonna get, run away with this game at some point. Because if, if I ever get, like, max on BCs, it's, it's probably going to be done and dusted, I would think. Now, because he stimmed on his base, I kind of thought he would have that watchtower, but didn't seem like he did. Keep repairing those, please. I definitely should have had my servos a little bit faster, though. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, he either he has the watchtower or he's just a genius. Um, or a hacker. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think he's a hacker, so... <laughs> I think he's probably just a genius, or he has to watch that. Uh, oh, I, di I didn't get my uh, building upgrades yet. That's a little bit of a mistake by me. Now, I think I actually... I know it sounds a bit silly because the Liberators haven't done too well for me. But I think I actually what I need is... Um, liberator. I feel like if I get enough Liberators, that's like the unit where I just close the game out as well. Both Liberators and BCs are going to be good. I think just make a few more Libs. Like, if I have the BCs to tank, obviously it's going to be all right for me. Let's see, yeah, he's gonna try, but I do have a little battle cruisers here. I'm actually gonna use this opportunity to kill the freaking medivacs too. Like battle cruisers are so good against marines, it's pretty. Oh, he has Vikings actually. So he did make Vikings. I thought only only I was allowed to make those. Now look at these. These battle cruisers actually killed every single marine. Okay, that was. This game has just been insane. Like these fights make no sense. I've been losing every single fight this entire game, and then he stims me into 500 marines against five BCs, and I lose one. Like, how, how do these fights make any sense anymore? I think it's probably just me that is, like, massively misjudging everything, but it's it really is crazy, to be honest. This game really is pretty crazy. Oh, I got my one lib here. Okay. Oh, he does have a lot. I don't have, actually, I don't have my Yamato yet. I think I'm just gonna dip here. Yeah, it seems like the best thing to do. Okay, so he is going for an air army. Like, a proper air army as well, not just, uh, you know, a few Vikings and stuff. He's actually really going for it. Which means I also need to make a proper air army, but obviously I am um, a little bit ahead, ahead of him in that regard, I guess you could say. Now, I actually still haven't cleared that watchtower, by the way, which is a little bit silly, admittedly, but... Let me be silly too sometimes, guys, it's okay. You, ca you can't always, you know, be non-silly. Not sure if there's a word for non-silly, but I think we just invented it, so there we go. Now, where's my Yamato gonna finish, though? Dude, that upgrade takes ages. Holy. Okay, I'm just gonna... I can actually siege that base. I think. He does have 3-3. Three, three. I don't think he has 3-3 three, three on his... Uh, on his Vikings, though. I would imagine that his Vikings are relatively unupgraded. Uh, I actually need a lot more Vikings, by the way. Vikings are the answer to Vikings. Uh, <laughs> sounds really dumb, but it's the case. Um, if you, BC is really good against Vikings, but only if you have Vikings behind them to cover them, pretty much. So what I need is to make a really good ratio of BCs. And then add a bunch of Vikings behind them. And then I guess my... Um, my uh, my liberators are going to be able to deal with the marines as well. So he has this base. This base is going to die very fast. He did scan my bottom base. Which makes me think he might actually go for it. Yeah, I feel like he hasn't made tanks in a while. Which is a little bit crazy. And so he's basically playing mass viking now. Uh, which is good. He has no upgrades though. Like this fight is going to be very easy for me. I want to say. Maybe not the liberators. But yeah, look at all the Amatos going down. It really sucks that well, my... Uh, Back BCs are actually shooting the freaking uh, planetary instead, though. Not you guys. You guys can siege there. How many Vikings? There's only four Vikings here. Which makes this a bit harder than it should. There we go. You can kill these turrets as well. I don't mind. As long as you tank. And there we go. GG. Even though that fight was really not perfectly microed by me, BC Viking just doesn't really lose to uh, pure Viking. Now, this is what's interesting here, guys. I played Sky Terran. Against the guy who was pretty much only making marines. And I was actually down in resources lost. You guys are not going to see that a lot in the games that I win. I think we saw it a bunch of times in Cyclone with a mine. But besides that, we haven't really seen it a lot. Actually 4k or 3.5k down in resources lost, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, I guess I just out macroed him. I got the fourth base super fast. My income was... All, oh, look at it. 1800 gas a minute. Holy cow. My income was more than double his actually. See, I, I, I basically out macroed him. He, I have to say, he outplayed me in the fights. He won so many fights. Uh, he read them better than me, even though he was like a little bit too YOLO for my taste. He did win the fight, so props to him. But anyway, that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you for the next one. Adios.